Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another episode of my Test Driven Development video series. And in this episode I'm going to pick up right where I left off with uh, some work on a number formatting spike.
And that brings us to the end of this bike. I lost a few minutes of video, but as you can see here, I have some code that will take a value, format it, it's localized, um, it responds to the enter key, it deals with bad characters, and um, generally works pretty well. So I'm going to take a little break, but next up, in just a moment, we will be looking at uh, taking the spike and turning it into real production code. Okay, I'm back. So let's take a quick look at what happened here. What we have going on is uh, this text field is what brings up the actual uh, formatted text field. Let me show you the the application as we're doing this, the spike code. Okay, so there's the spike app. Um, what happens is we use this formatter factory to create the controller, or not the controller, but the formatted text field is all controlled by this formatter factory uh, and by formatters. And so we create our own formatter factory and then create our own number of formatters or display formatters and set those up in a particular way to get everything to work. So here in the formatter factory, we're creating a new default formatter factory using a display default formatter, a display formatter, an edit formatter, and our default formatter is just our display formatter. The way the display formatter and edit formatter work is they are using Java's built-in number formatter, and for the display format, which is what we do when we're not editing, we are doing uh, a localized value, and for the purposes of the spike, I set the locale to France to sh show that it was localized, um, but still using the U.S. dollar uh, currency. So, anyway, it's it's fairly complicated. It actually, I think it's it's fairly it's very robust. Um, you know, it's it's easy to make fun of Java for having you know the factory design, factory, factory, factories, um, but in this case, it works pretty well and they've done a good job of hiding the complexity so that when you don't need it you don't have to use it but when you do need it it's there and I find that other languages uh, particularly C Sharp at least .NET in the early days uh, had this problem in a big way it's probably better now but in the early days of .NET they did a great job of providing sensible defaults but under the hood there wasn't any sophistication so you couldn't do what we needed to do here which was say, to say give me a localized format so that if we're in France, um, let's see, we're in France and we're asking for $330, it will show up as, as the French folks expect it. And if we're in the U.S. and we ask for $330, come on, it will show up as the U.S. folks expect it. So that's that's really well done, and um, I was a little nervous at first because it seemed to default to using the currency, so at first it was saying 330 euros, but um, and now it's, it was just a matter of setting the currency. So lots of great stuff in there, a um, little bit hard to figure out, but I think I've got it. Um, the, what I've got going here with the spike is pretty ugly, but that's just because I was trying to figure out the spike code, so that's no big deal. And then... Um, you can do that, or you can do that. Oh, that failed. Interesting. What did we get there? Um, huh. I didn't realize that. It looks like the number formatter gives us um, huh, that broke it. Okay, so in, in my code, I assume that a particular value is coming out, and that didn't work um, because the type of number I was assuming wasn't actually present. So that's something I'll have to deal with. Anyway, so there is the final code. What I need to do now is go into my production code and recreate this spy code in a robust way using tests. I don't think we're going to get much of that done right now in this video, but I'm going to get started on it. Um, the main question that I have is, do I want to extend the, the uh, formatted text field to create my dollars text field, or do I want to 
encapsulate it uh, and delegate to it. My tendency here is to delegate because it has a bunch of methods on it that really don't make sense for what I want to do. It's just got all this junk on it. Um, particularly things like set value and get value that are going to take objects rather than the actual values. It's got this add property change listener and you have to know this magic word. So I'd like to be able to encapsulate all that stuff and hide it from the programmers using this class. Um, the only issue with that is that on the UI it's a little more difficult to delegate rather than encapsulate uh, rather than inherit. I think what I'm going to have to do, and I'm not 100% sure on this, I think what I have to do is actually uh, inherit from a panel, which doesn't have anything built in, and then have the panel contain the field, and then forward all the methods that I want to forward on to that panel. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and get started on a test. Like I said, we don't have a whole lot of time left in this video, so I'm not sure how far we'll get, but give it a try. So I think this is going to be a dollars text field. Uh, for lack of a better name. And let's have that extend J panel. Oops, that's this should be dollars text field test anyway. Okay. Uh, let's I'm just waiting for those tests to run. There they go. First time I've run tests in a while, it's got to swap everything back in. Okay, there's our failing test. Okay, so very first test I want here is um, what exactly? Well, that's the question, isn't it? I guess what I'd like to be able to do is to set a value. Um, hmm. I want to have I want to have uh, well let's see how does this going to work. We're going to have a dollars text field probably going to want to pass it either a document or a value. I'm not sure which. Um, and then what? I'm not sure. Well, but that's all the time we have, so I'm going to think about this, uh, and then next time we record, we'll dig into this in detail. So thanks very much for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.